Howdy, my name is Blaine Carter. I'm a product manager here at Oracle, and today I'm going to give you a quick overview of Oracle's Visual Builder Studio. I'm going to cover some of the key functionalities provided by Oracle Visual Builder Studio, including an issue tracking system, agile dashboards for planning, development sprint execution and tracking, code version management and peer code review, build and test automation for various languages, and continuous deployment of artifacts to your environment. So we'll start out in the project view of Visual Builder Studio, and this is where you can find all the recent activity for your project, including all of the activities from our team members. And we can see right here that the last activity was an automated test that failed. So let's click into that build job, and over here you can find the test results. And if we drill down into there, we can see that the test failed because we got Howdy World and we were expecting Hello World. We'll cover how to fix this issue in just a minute, but before we do that, uh, let's take a look at another part of our testing capabilities, which includes detecting vulnerabilities in third-party libraries. Our dependency analyzer can review the libraries that are being used in your project and identify any of the libraries that have known vulnerabilities. So over here, we can see the libraries that have issues and we can drill down in to see the actual uh, report, uh, the actual issue that was reported in the National Vulnerability Database. So we're gonna fix the vulnerabilities at another time, but for now, we're just gonna focus on fixing the failed test message. So let's document this issue in our issue tracking system. Uh, this is a good place where we can keep track of all of our to-do items. Let's create a new issue and we'll give it a summary. The test failed for Hello World and we'll give it a little bit of a description. This is Howdy World should be Hello World. Uh, in here we can select the type of issue that it is, whether it's a defect, feature or task. Uh, we can also create epics and stories uh, for agile methodology. We can choose the severity and the priority and we can select from customized lists such as the component of our project where the error occurred. So we'll select that there and we can set the owner of the project. Let's assign it to or the issue. So we're going to assign that to me and then down here we can give it a due date. Uh, we'll set it for tomorrow and we can also set the uh, or estimate how long in days it's going to take or give it some agile complexity points. So let's give it three points for agile and we will create the issue. All right, so once we've created uh, issue 381, this is going to be part of our backlog. All right, so let's switch over to the Jeff admin view of our project and we'll go down into the boards and we will look at our backlog. So I'm going to create a new sprint. We'll call this July S1 and we're gonna give it points of complexity here. I'm gonna give them 12 points for this sprint and that creates a new sprint. And then we just simply drag and drop things from our backlog up into the current sprint. Assuming I can get things in the right spot here. Get those all up into there. And then now that I have everything that uh, I want in the sprint, we'll go ahead and start the sprint. And that looks good. We'll hit start. We'll jump over to the active sprints here. And over here, you could customize the length of, this, of the sprint if you want to. It defaults to two weeks. And in our scrum board here, we can see exactly who's responsible for what and what the status of each of the objects are. And then of course up here, you can find a bunch of different reports to get the project, pro uh, get the progress of your project. All right, so now let's switch back over to the developer view. As the developer for the project, I'm gonna jump up into my project home and look at the activity stream. I'm gonna see the same activity stream as a developer as the project manager would uh, in the project manager view. And there is at the top here, you can see there's a defect that's been assigned to me. There's a couple different ways I'll find out about defects. Uh, I can receive an email. I can see it pop up here in the activity stream, or I can go down into issues and look at the issues that have been assigned 
assigned to me. So once there's been an issue assigned to me, I can open that issue up. And in here, I can uh, read all of the different details about the issue. I can update anything that needs to be updated, uh, put on comments, uh, any pretty much any attachments, anything that needs to be done to complete this issue. I'm going to switch over to my Git repository. So this is a private Git repository that holds all of my source code. And in here, I want to make a fix. So I'm going to create a new branch and I'm going to call it uh, issue 381. And I will hit create. So now that I have my new branch, I'm going to search the code for the problem. So I'm looking for the word howdy because we just need to change howdy to hello. And I'll find the file where the issue is right here. We can see that the, the greeting has been set to howdy. Now I could, of course, clone this down to my laptop and do my work over there in my favorite IDE. But this is such a simple fix. I'm just going to use the edit button here to change howdy to be hello. And once that's done, I'm going to hit commit and I will uh, create the, uh, so this is a fix for issue 381. And I changed howdy to hello. Okay, that's a good uh, commit message. Now that I've created a new branch with my fix in it, I want to get that branch merged into the main branch. So a couple different ways I could do that. I could go into merge requests and create a new merge request here, or I can go into the issue that I'm resolving and create a merge request from here. So I go in here, I select the repository. I want to merge into the master from issue 381. That was my new branch. I'm going to hit uh, create. And that will create my new merge request. And then I can get to the merge request from the issue clicking here. And you can see that it has all the information that I need for it over here. I can look at the commits that are included. I can see the file that was changed. Since I created this from the issue itself, it automatically linked the issue. And so now I want to manage my reviewers and I want to ask Jeff Admin to come and review this merge request for me. So let's switch over to the view for Jeff Admin and Jeff can look at the activity and see that he's been added as a reviewer for review 382. I can come in here as Jeff and see all of the same stuff that I saw as Blaine, uh, write messages back and forth, have a conversation about it. Uh, or I can just go in and say, yeah, that all looks good. So I'll put looks good and I'll approve the merge request. And then if we had other or required approvers in here, we could wait till everybody's approved it. And once everybody's happy, we can hit merge. And we'll go in here and also delete the branch because there's no reason to leave that um, branch floating around out there. And down here, if we choose, we can resolve the issue that it's attached to. So I'll hit create a merge commit. And so that will merge my new branch into main. And once that happens, it's going to trigger a build pipeline. The merge request is done. Let's jump over to the builds area and take a look at the QA deployment uh, pipeline. And we will look at the one that's currently executing. So you can see that the test job has already happened. After the test job, it went through a couple Docker publishing jobs. And you can see that the create jar job is actively running right now. Uh, when that one's complete and turns green, then it will use SSH to deploy the, uh, the application. All right, so let's actually go in and take a look at these jobs one at a time. I'm going to jump back over to builds and just look at the jobs and we'll start with the test job. We'll hit the config button and this takes us into our git config. Uh, you can see here we're connected to our git repository and this checkbox means that the build will be triggered anytime that a change is committed to the master branch. In our before build step is where we would turn on the dependency vulnerability analyzer uh, that we were looking at before. I have that disabled since I haven't actually fixed that yet. And then under steps, 
is where you can see that we're using Maven to execute our tests. So the steps actually support uh, quite a few different uh, utilities. So you have some common build frameworks out there, such as Ant, Gradle, and Maven, or when all else fails, uh, use Unix shell. There are other utilities here. For example, you can uh, run SQL files or SQL commands with SQL CL. You've got the command line interface for the Oracle Cloud, uh, Node.js functionality uh, using a bunch of different uh, features from the FN project, all kinds of Docker commands. Uh, if you want to work with uh, Oracle Visual Applications, Visual Builder, you can do uh, application extensions and visual extension commands here. So lots and lots of options that are available for your build steps. And then once your build is done, uh, since we executed the test, this will publish the test results into the JUnit Publisher, which is what activates the button we saw earlier that shows you the test results. And then here we will artifact or archive all of the artifacts found in this build job. Uh, I like to I like to collect all of my files in my first job in my pipeline and then use those files uh, from that job rather than going back to Git every time just so I can avoid uh, the situation where somebody might push uh, another commit to Git while my pipeline's running. Let's jump back over to the pipeline and open that back up and view the layout. And so the two uh, Docker jobs are very similar. So let's just go into this one. Uh, no git here because I am using the before build to pull from the, the test job so that all my, my files I'm working with stay the same. Uh, there's a Docker login, a Docker build, and a Docker push. Uh, both of these jobs are basically the same. Let's go back there so I won't pull that one up. It's the same type of a thing. Uh, we'll jump into the create jar job. Uh, you can see in here... Uh, we're copying the artifacts, and then we're running the uh, Maven package step that will package up the job, build that jar file, and then we archive that jar file. And then finally, uh, let's look at the SSH deploy job. And in here, uh, we're copying over the artifacts, and down here we're configuring our SSH, and then in the steps we will execute a few shell commands and then that is how the jobs all work. Now that our pipeline is finished we can switch back over to the project home where we can see the full development process from one central location inside of Visual Builder Studio. Uh, we can look at our recent activities and see the full development flow from where our test failed uh, and we identified what was wrong there. Uh, we reported the issue in our issue reporting system. The issue was picked up by one of our developers where the code was branched, created a fix, uh, ran the changes through the code review process where the change was approved and then merged into the master branch, which triggered the, uh, the pipeline. And then the code was tested and published to multiple repositories, then packaged up and deployed. And now that the issue has gone through all of that, it has been resolved and we can jump over to our boards and look at the active sprint. And you can see that it, through all of that, the issue has been moved over to the completed section. Uh, so this has been a demonstration of the full, completely integrated development experience of Oracle's Visual Builder Studio. I hope you found this useful, and thank you for spending your time with me.